A good percentage of diseases in most developing countries like Ghana are linked to poor environmental sanitation. Pollution is the largest environmental cause of diseases and premature death in the world today. Diseases caused by pollution were responsible for an estimated 9 million premature deaths in 2015, representing 16% of all deaths worldwide, and three times more deaths than from AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria combined. How do we ensure that our people are healthy to accelerate our progress to a healthy nation status? It is said that health is wealth after all. Your ever dynamic TV program, Trash Talk, looks at the health impact of poor environments in our communities. You wouldn't want to miss this. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome to Trash Talk. Today on Trash Talk, we are going to talk about in the impact of the environment on our health in our communities, how our own activities in terms of environmental management issues impact our own health. With me to do the discussions today, I have three gentlemen, and I'm happy to have with me Mr. Joseph Yeboa from UNIDO and Mr. Amoya Osei from Green Advocacy Ghana. And of course, we have Dr. K.A. Asante from CSIR Water Resource Institute. With me today, they are going to tell us, in fact, they are going to educate us on what we are doing right and what we are not doing right, contributing to the health status of our communities. You are welcome, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I would want to start off by giving you the opportunity to tell us about what your various organizations do. I'll start off with you, Mr. Yeboah. Thank you very much. Yes. So my name is Joseph Yeboah, and I'm the environment focal person at the UNIDO country office. And um, UNIDO is, uh, is a specialized agency of the United Nations, uh, which has the mandate to promote inclusive and sustainable industrial development. By inclusivity, UNIDO's work uh, focuses on ensuring that all segments of society, whether poor people, young people, old people, women, youth, um, benefit from the <clears throat> the, the, the good things that flow from industrialization. Okay. And then um, by sustainability, our work is to ensure that as countries, uh, you know, industrialize, uh, industrialization will not have an, uh, you know, any negative or adverse impact on, um, on the environment. So in this mandate is to ensure that development is more rounded, that is uh, industrialization is rounded, that it benefits both the society, the environment, and also brings economic prosperity. Okay, I'll so move can, on to Dr. Asante. Uh, yes, Dr. Asante, to tell us about the CSIR Water Resource Research Institute. Okay, Doc, you're right. welcome. Thank you very much, yes. and uh, I'm glad you have corrected yourself. Yes. So it says CSIR Water Research Institute. Yes. Actually, there are 14 institutions under the CSIR. Mm. 13, sorry. Okay. Under the CSIR. Water Research Institute is one of the 13 institutes. So as you know, water is part of the ecosystem. Yes. And whatever happens in the environment eventually ends up in our water bodies. So there's the need to understand the activities that we go about doing and then know the effect that these activities cause on human health. Okay. So basically, that is why we are here. All right. Thank you. Then we'll move to Green Advocacy Ghana. Mr. Osei, what does Green Advocacy Ghana do? Um, <coughs> green, excuse me, Green Advocacy is an environmental and health NGO, and uh, our main focus is in sanitation and waste management. And in recent years, we have focused on e-waste. Okay. And um, when it comes to e-waste, we are one of the leading in the country with a lot of publications to our credit. And uh, we have a facility at the Agbo Blushi Scrapyard, still you know, receiving and uh, purchasing um, waste scrap like um, um, cables, and like um, thermoplastics, like batteries, and so on. 
And uh, this is under uh, the government of Ghana, Ministry of Environment and uh, uh, the German government funded project. Okay. But, but you are a civil society organization. Civil society organization, all right. yes. Um, it's interesting though. I mean, of all the thematic areas in the environmental space, um, why e-waste? Well, we identified um, in 2009 that e-waste um, was one of the emerging problematic areas uh, that um, much attention was not given to. And we thought that we should pioneer um, our efforts towards managing that sector so that it doesn't come to add to our already existing precarious uh, situation with the, our domestic uh, waste management. So that's how come we ventured there when there was nobody, nobody there. Thank you. I mean, we'll delve into the main issues today. Um, I, want, I know that a common area for all of us is public health. What is public health and why should we be concerned about public health as citizens? I'll start off with Doc. Well, uh, to begin with, uh, public health has to do with the health status of the individual. And like you said, public. So it also involves the activities that go on around our communities. So whatever impacts that our activities have will eventually end up in our system. So if you are burning around your area, bear in mind that the fumes that you are inhaling will eventually affect your health system. So basically, it deals with the environmental issues, how environmental issues or activities impact on our human health. And that is what I will see as a public health. You need those position on public health and why we should be concerned? Yes, um, so, um, so generally, um, we, we believe that, uh, you know, Human beings are created to live in a clean, healthy environment. And so that's why um, every natural environment has very clean water, good um, luxuriant vegetation, and others. And so uh, as humans, we need to um, live in an environment that is sustainable. And um, so what it means is that um, be, for us to be very productive, we also need to have a clean, healthy environment that actually promotes you know, well-being. So, so that's generally the, the perspective uh, so far as how public health is concerned. If something were to go wrong in the public health space, who would be much harmed? I would still come to you, Nido, on this one. Yeah, so generally, uh, if something were, were, you know, was to go wrong um, in the public health space, um, I'll say that everybody has a responsibility. So, um, you know, the general population has a responsibility because we have a duty to ourselves and to nature and also to even, um, you know, fellow humans to ensure that we maintain a clean, safe environment. And that aside, because uh, uh, the, uh, the government has also has a duty to ensure that people comply, you know, with the regulations and rules that are, that are put in place. And so... Um, yeah, so that's, that will be the, the, the bit of government. And then with respect to, uh, there are also, uh, you know, civil society groups, development partners, civil society yes, groups yeah. like Green Advocacy, uh, they also have a responsibility to support all actions that promote public health. And then development partners like UNIDO, um, you know, and others also have a duty uh, within their, man, their mandate to ensure that, you know, whatever actions and activities, usually from our perspective, we look at, you know, programmatic actions or strategic level, excuse me, strategic level support or actions that can help to, um, you know, improve uh, public health. We're able to support with that. So we all have a duty. What are, for, from a development partner's point of view, what are the main areas in industrialization of concern to you which are related to public health? Right. So um, I think that from, um, let me take, rather take it from the work that we have done in Ghana and elsewhere. So UNIDO, as an agency, has over the years supported Ghana. And uh, I'll say that the, the latest or the... Uh, well, currently, we have some projects ongoing which are also public health connected, uh, even though we, are look, we, we started looking at it more from an environment perspective. But generally, it has implications on you know, public health. So that's why I talked about our mandate, talking about the fact that our work is to promote inclusive and sustainable development. Uh, in 2018, we... Um, 
partnered with the uh, with MESTI, Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology, Innovation, EPA, CSIR, uh, Green Advocacy, and others. Uh, to, uh, to develop what we call a health and pollution action plan for Ghana. A health and pollution action, action plan, plan for Ghana. Okay. Yes, and the whole idea was to ensure that um, we, we put in place um, a plan that will help us to strategically address the issues of uh, you know, pollution that has impacts on human health. So um, we did a prioritization. So maybe we'll go into that, but uh, to right. start with, so essentially the key uh, areas of focus were ambient air, indoor air, water quality, uh, soil pollution, and also other occupational health and, uh, occupational health and safety issues. So, you know, um, this has been some of the support, but currently we have other interventions that are supporting uh, uh, Ghana to uh, bring into place a framework, uh, a circular economy framework for addressing, um, you know, plastic waste. Uh, you know, that's one conversation that we can have. And then also with the support of the Government of Canada, uh, that's the Global Affairs Canada. Uh, we have a, a new project that will seek to establish a center of excellence for circular economy um, in, in Ghana in a tertiary educational institution. So maybe we can have more time yeah. to delve into that. Thank okay. you. Very much. I will come to. I want to come to um, Mr. Moya or say, Green um, Advocacy Ghana. I mean, I know that when. Um, Joseph was speaking, he mentioned a partnership with you as, as part of the programs they've rolled out. Green Advocacy Ghana, what have you been doing in the environmental space that has to do with public health? Yes, we've been doing a lot. And uh, um, we also used to serve as a secretariat for the Pure Earth. Pure Earth. Pure Earth uh, used to be called the Blacksmith Institute of the U.S. Mm -hmm. And we, through Pure Earth, undertook uh, what we call um, uh, site investigations, uh, polluted pollution site investigations throughout the country. Uh, so we identified all potential pollution sites and um, we mapped out all such sites and we did surveys um, of basic you know, pollution or pollutants um, in these areas. And so we have a database of all such polluted areas in the country. And we also even estimated the degree of uh, pollution. And so it was through one of such, you know, uh, activities that, if you remember, Agbubulushi was listed among the top 10 uh, polluted places in, I think, 2013, 2012, 2013, thereabout. It was partly through our work. And in fact, that, that piece of work formed um, um, a solid base for the work that uh, Joseph just referred to. Uh, yes, so we've been doing a lot. Apart from that, we've also been working with um, uh, schools, primary schools and uh, uh, GHSs, uh, educating them on, on environment and creating environmental clubs, okay. green clubs in their schools. Um, and the whole idea is to catch them young uh, because for the adult population, uh, we seem to have lost them as far mm. as environment is concerned. Mm. So, and we also initiated a publication of a newsletter for children and the youth. Uh, we call it Green Alert. And um, it's something that we're going to you know, place more emphasis on, uh, which is an avenue for educating the kids and catching them young for the environment. Apart from the e-waste and other things, uh, so these are some of the Education. things. Education. Yeah. I want to come to Dr. Asante. Doc, what is research, what's the research pointing to the areas of worry between water, our water bodies, and our public health? Okay, so before I answer you, let me say something to the question you asked. To Joseph, yeah. Joseph, about who is more at risk. Yes, sir. Uh, we are all at risk. But in terms of age, children are more vulnerable to these pollutants for several reasons. Okay. Among them include they have a small body weight, their immune system is also not well developed. And because of that, it also affects their level of thinking, their reasoning, and the like. Mm -hmm. So children are more at risk. Okay. 
Okay. And then when you come to the adults, here again, the women are also more at risk compared to the men. Because if they carry these contaminants or pollutants, eventually they will transfer to the newborns, even when the babies are in their, in their, in their uh, tummy, through the placenta. Okay. And then when they are born, to, they are transferred through breast milk. Okay. Yeah. So right. this is how the situation is. Yeah. So in terms of uh, your question, what are we doing? What have we done? What is the research pointing Good. to? Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll not speak for only myself, yes, but sir. for researchers in general. You know, there has been a lot of studies on these contaminants and their health impacts. So we have taken it upon ourselves to also dwell into these areas because uh, on our parts of the, of the world, uh, we don't have uh, much data pointing to these uh, pollutants and their health implications. So that is what uh, myself and other colleagues have done to research into these areas. We have worked on uh, breast milk myself. Breast milk. Yes, okay. I did that for my PhD. Okay. I also touched on fish, okay. uh, cow milk, soil samples and the like, as well as uh, urine samples from the e-waste workers. So I tried to look at the contaminants in the matrices and then the health implications, whether they are causing harm or they are not. So basically that is what uh, we have been researching into. Yeah, I would want you to tell us a little more about the relationship of, for instance, breast milk, as you've mentioned, and the water we consume. Okay. Breast milk is liquid. Yes. Humans will consume food. So if the food is contaminated and the mother consumes it, eventually you are going to transfer the contaminants from the mother to the newborn through the breast milk or breastfeeding. So that is the way the infants also get these contaminants through the mother. I will move to Joseph again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I know Unido is around the world. What are some of the practices around the world which support industrialization but related to water if, or our environment? Yes, so, um, so one is, uh, so Unido has been promoting resource use efficiency. Okay, could you explain that to us? Resource use efficiency, what does it mean? So what it means is that, uh, first of all, okay, let me just uh, yes. go back a bit and, yes. and still go back to our mandate of okay. promoting sustainable inclusive and sustainable industrial development. So I mentioned in my introductory statement that by sustainability, we want to ensure that industrialization does not impact adversely on the environment. Now, when you say environment, so environment, not just environment, environment, you know, uh, society, as I never also bring positive uh, prosper prosperity, but in terms of environment, so we have water as one of the parameters when we are talking about environment. Environment, we talk about air, etc. Now, with respect to water, our mandate, or we ensure through our work, that the industri that industrial activities do not, for instance, lead to pollution. Okay. That water is not polluted as a result of industrial development. So, whatever industrial activities are, 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 are taking, are you know, uh, being undertaken, must put in place mechanisms to prevent polluting water bodies, whether you know, they are streams or rivers or even the sea. Now, also, in the use of water, so I talk about resource use efficiency. So in the use of water, industri industries must be efficient so that processes that will uh, you know, require water use, the, the use of water, must be designed in a way that ensures that uh, you know, water is not necessarily misused. If there's the uh, you know, there's, uh, there's available technology for recycling or for treating the water. It's better to use such a, such a technology than to just use and, you know, dispose of. Because uh, we've seen uh, processes where, you know, we just, uh, there's inflow and outflow. Basically, that the water comes into the industry, they use it whether it's for cooling or heating, uh, heating cooling, or whatever it is, and then it ends up just flowing out of the factory. But if there could be, there's a mechanism or for instance, recycling the water, treating it. If it's for it will be cooling, you take it back to a water treatment plant, you cool it, and then you bring it back into the cycle so that the water can be recycled uh, so that we don't overuse it. Because one thing about uh, nature is that whatever we have, especially with renewable natural resources, uh, is that you know, it is finite. You know, so water, even though we see abundance of water, it is still finite because uh, today, you walk around, maybe when we were young, we could see a lot of 
fresh looking you know, streams and water bodies, but today how many or how, how much fresh water do you see? So that's a big problem. Okay, so we need to be able to conserve water as we try to industrialize, as we try to develop as a country, uh -huh. and not just Ghana, but also you know, um, you know, other countries around the world. So water is extremely important um, you know, for human activities, including agriculture, etc. But in terms of our mandate, our work is to ensure that the use of water is efficient, and then that it, does not, it, is, it is not polluted by, you know, through such a process, uh, through the industrial, industrialization process, so that we don't have also the negative environmental impact. When you say we are to ensure that water, for instance, is ut utilized judiciously, or that water, for instance, is ut utilized judiciously, I mean, I, let's take a typical example of a factory where they are producing, say, tin tomatoes, and the, the affluent from the activities would end up in a water body. What can the UN do? The UNIDO, well, what can you do? Yeah, so um, if, for what instance... What would you ideally do in such a situation? Okay, so ideally, I'll say that uh, what we can do is, number one, um, in Ghana, we have, uh, you know, good, uh, good number of policies and laws so <coughs> from the uh, environmental assessment regulation, which requires, for instance, that all um, undertakings, that is all new or even existing, um, you know, operations like factories, etc., must have must uh, go through environmental impact assessment. So you need those work. Then, if, for instance, there was no law, we can support the government to bring into place a law or a regulation that will help to to basically control and manage that. That's number one. Number two, uh, you need those work. Uh, could also be uh, that if, for instance, there are no standards, you know, standards for treated water quality, etc. Okay. Then we could also support the government to bring it to place. Will you ideally, for instance, be working with CSIR um, to set up those standards to back maybe research outcomes? Is that the kind of thing you do? Yes. So um, uh, in Ghana, we've done a lot. Um, we've done a lot of work with regards to standards, um, working with the Ghana Standards Authority. Okay. Um, so it's not only about developing the standards, yes. but also supporting them with the, uh, the necessary instrumentation or laboratory equipment to be able to you know, test. So we've built technical capacity for testing. We've provided in some instances or supported uh, for the acquisition of um, you know, laboratory equipment. Uh, we've supported GSA to develop standards for various things, not okay. just in the environment, but also in food quality standards, etc. Okay. So... Um, you need those work, uh, really, if there, isn't, if there aren't standards, if there aren't any laws, or if the laws are not effective enough, we also support uh, government to be able to you know, bring into place new okay. systems. So um, I mentioned, for instance, um, one of our um, new projects that we are uh, implementing with MESTI, Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology, and Innovation. And that's a um, you know, plastic um, circular economy project. And within that project, there's that opportunity to align you know, existing policies and laws and regulations and even standards to, um, you know, circular economy practice because the government, is, 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 you know, intends to bring into place a circular economy framework into the management of plastics. So our work is very broad. Um, we look at it from a much more strategic, high-level point of view. Um, there are instances where we uh, intervene with some activities, but essentially to um, help the government to be able to improve its capacity to manage I mean, is, I hope, is that the same project that the Canadian government is supporting? No, so there are two different. Okay. Uh, so the, the uh, Plus Circular Economy Project um, is a, a global environmental facilities for that project. Okay. So that's a five year project. All right. Um, that will look at, first of all, supporting the development of a framework okay. for plastic money, and then also piloting a number of interventions that will seek to address um, plastic pollution. Um, but so. Interventions in various areas. Um, within this, the scope of the project, we are looking at interventions that will one um, uh, create an effective after-use uh, economy for plastics. That is to say that when the plastic bottles and other you know plastic materials have been used, is there a way to uh, essentially create some econo economy around it so that it doesn't just become waste that will go to the dump? That's number one. We are also looking at um, interventions that will seek to decouple or uh, separate the manufacture of plastics from uh, you know, uh, fossil fuels. And so we're looking at alternative materials for, um, 
for the manufacture of plastics. Okay. Uh, there are instances where some institutions, uh, some you know entities are have, are, are create, I mean, there are solutions some institutions are creating, for instance, by um, developing plastic alternatives from cassava starch, as an example. And the third one is to um, ensure that plastic, uh, plastic uh, waste does not enter um, you know, natural systems, such as water bodies, etc. So that's the Jeff uh, project. Okay. Then there is the Canadian project, right. which will establish a center of excellence yes. for uh, for for uh, uh, for circular economy yeah. in Ghana. Now that particular project um, is um, uh, you know focusing on one supporting circular economy capacity, building circular economy capacity yeah. in Ghana. Uh, so looking at technical capacity, and then also providing um, you know uh, financial support as well as business management support to um, informal sector, women and youth in plastic, sorry, in secular economy business. Now, uh, the good thing about that particular project is the fact that um, women, uh, women and youth are going to be central to that project. Um, and then maybe my final, my final point about that project is the fact that um, the, the, the project will uh, Will essentially be institute, will situated in a in a in a tertiary educational um, yeah, institution. Yeah. The idea is to connect the work that is happening on the ground with uh, with research academia, uh, so that uh, industry um, uh, you know industry industrial industry players like AGI and others can have a direct connection with academia, and then academia will also um, use their research capability be able to you know delve more into the subject and then be able to have like sort a direct of feed, transfer feed the of that so okay. bridging the gap between academia and industry and also creating the the, the future generation of you know practitioners um, who will be able to help to essentially develop circular economy in Ghana so that we become much more efficient in our use of material and, and all that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Doc we come to you. CSIR, Water Research Institute, yes. Okay, so let me say that uh, there are standards set yes. for drinking water mm -hmm. as well as uh, wastewater. And uh, <clears throat> sorry, these have been set by Ghana Stands Authority and the EPA of Ghana. So whatever we do, we try to match our results with the standards set by these two, two agencies. For instance, uh, we have some agreements with some companies. Mm -hmm. So we monitor their effluent, okay. the water that they discharge mm -hmm. into the environment. We do that um, either monthly or quarterly base, depending on the, on the kind of agreement we have with them. So we go there ourselves to sample, we come back to analyze, and then report to the company. They intend also send a report to EPA. So this is something that is ongoing. But let me say that the most industry, industries uh, do not comply. And uh, it's something we have discussed with uh, EPA. Some do, but most of them do not. Well, probably they don't have the uh, treatment plant in place, or it's a normal Ghanaian character. Nobody will worry me, so I will not do it. But are, are these industries or organizations aware of these things that they are, they are supposed to do? They are aware. So I think they must uh, crack the whip. That's the way I see it. They okay. are aware of that. They, they are supposed to send quarter reports or monthly reports to EPA okay. to know what they are discharging into the environment, because eventually it's going to affect you and I. Mm -hmm. Like you said, yeah. the drinking water is going to be contaminated, yes. the mother will take it and then transfer right. to the baby. Yes. So whatever you do has an uh, impact on our lives. Mr. Osei, yes. apart from, I know they've all come from an institutional point of view and the activities. I get a sense from you that apart from educating the young people on their, their civil responsibility, um, you also go beyond that. I would want to understand some of the activities at the community level that you've observed, which are negative, which are impacting our health negatively. Yeah, um, if you take, for instance, uh, some work that we did at uh, a place called Bankuman. Bankuman, where is that? Um, it's uh, near Accra New, hey, Tama New Town, sorry. Tama New Town. Tama okay. New Town, yeah. Uh, in fact, the exact area is where the landfall of the um, West Africa pipeline, um, gas pipeline uh, to Accra, I mean, okay. to Tema, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and what we did, I mean, um, was to mobilize the community 
to do a serious um, um, cleaning of the beach because they, they had their dump sites positioned just by the beach and dead animals, everything goes, you know, was thrown there. And we also had a surprise. I mean, we, we saw bales of, uh, you know, used clothing and the way it was packed there, as if it's been deliberately arranged. We're wondering where that came from. And we had to mobilize the community to clean all this and to give a kind of education, raising awareness that, you know, um, anything you do like that has effect on you because the flies around, you know, come back to you and then they transfer all kinds of diseases, diarrhea diseases and, and uh, you know, cholera and all that. See, and, you know, they also use those areas as the, the uh, you know, uh, area for uh, edification. Yes. Yeah, so, so these this are some of the things we do. Educating them, raising their awareness, their consciousness, and involving them in some of such activities so that going forward, they do not go back to such practices. But I can imagine other communities where they haven't had a feel of your activities. Um, how are they going to, first of all, even embark on such an activity? Once they do that, who is to, who's responsible for sponsoring them? And even with a community that you've sponsored, after you left, is there a sustainability plan? What has happened? This is the challenge. This is the biggest challenge that we have. And I think that um, the problem must be laid at the doorstep of the assemblies. So because government? It, it, well, uh, usually when you say government, <laughs> then it's to no one. So but it's government, specifically, but specifically the assemblies. The assemblies, because they have the mandate to manage waste, domestic waste especially. Yes. That is their mandate. See, and they have to create such disposal sites and provide the disposal infrastructure for uh, such communities. But if you leave the communities to improvise and create their own system of managing their things, then this is what we expect. And the cost implication, health burden, uh, is just enormous for they themselves and what they also transfer to the other public. And, um, you know, as you know, and you mentioned it, the, health, the cost burden to our national health insurance scheme See, and then also to the economy generally. See, so um, these are the multiple effects of some of such behaviors. And the assemblies must be positioned to perform their tasks. I want to move on quickly to a very popular and not so popular topic, Galamse. Because it has everything to do with what we are talking about. Public health. Has Galamse got any public health issue? problem that we should be very worried about. Apart from, I mean, people say, well, we are creating jobs. And employment is also very important in the scheme of things. But can we look at the topic of Galamte? I would want to start off with Dr. Asante. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, a lot has been said about uh, Galamte activities. Um, yes. It is an issue because of uh, mercury that they employ. To extract the mercury. Gold. Yes. So tell us, they use mercury um, as what and to, for what? For the extraction of gold. For the extraction yes. of gold. And mercury, we know, is a toxic element. Um, we want to understand. So okay. mercury would ideally be put where? In the water bodies or no? After or on they the ground. Have after they have taken, let's say, the mud. Yes. Then they will use the mercury to extract the to get the okay. gold okay. out of it. So the now mercury will be used to separate yes. the mud from yes, yes. the metal. Yeah, and then when okay. it's done, they wash back everything into the water bodies. And that is where the problem is. Okay. Because as you know, there are fishes in the water. Yes. There are also other forms of uh, life in the water, the phytoplankton, the other forms of uh, life. So eventually, it's going to contaminate the fishes. Humans are also going to drink the water. And as I said, mercury is toxic. It has effects on the human body, particularly with the kidney. Is it a long-term kind of effect or a short-term? Well, uh, you see, we have something called a half-life. Okay. Okay. So every contaminant has its own half-life. Some are in hours, some are in days, some are in weeks, and even years. 
So by half, like it means it stays there, and then half of the amount to be metabolized. Okay. And then it will be excreted through the urine. All right. Okay. So it depends on the half life of the compound we are talking about. Okay. So if the half life is has a very long period, then it will stay in your body for a long period, and then it will cause harm to your body. And that is why it is an issue at, at hand. So all these communities, let's just say that I've been to some Galamse sites in the Western region before. Um, they are not necessarily close to where people, the settlements. So why should we be so worried about the people in the communities and where these um, Galamse activities are taking place? Water is not static. Okay. It flows. Mm -hmm. So you may have the activity done here. People use the water downstream are going to be affected because the water doesn't stay at one place. It flows. And that is why it's a major concern. For instance, we all go on trek. Mm -hmm. When you go, we eat within the communities. They use the same water to cook the food for us to eat. That is why it's a national concern, not only uh, 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 localized. Yeah. It is an issue because we are all at risk. Should we, the Unido, industrialization is your passion. You should ideally be very happy that a country like Ghana, we are blessed with so much gold and through industrialization, we are bringing out so much gold from our land. And are you worried, you need, is Unido worried about this part of industrialization, which has turned into some sort of a monster, Galamse monster? Yes, yes. So and you what need, is your worry, if you are? Th thank you. So <laughs> our worry, um, I think I've, I've already outlined, <laughs> yes. our worry or concern is that um, you know, people will be affected ultimately. That's it. The health of people will be negatively impacted by that. Now, uh, to add and then come and then, and then yes. maybe I'll add uh, from where doc, uh, doc. So, you know, um, mercury exists in about three forms. Okay. As, you know, vapor or as in gaseous form. You're gaseous. educating yeah, us on gas. trash talk. So I want so you let's to say tell us. As okay. a gas. So that's one form. That's it one comes form. in the form of a gas. Okay, let, let okay. me add. Also, yeah. There are three. We have the elemental mercury. Elemental inorganic mercury. mercury inorganic mercury. And organic mercury. And organic. It's the inorganic which is causing harm. Okay. You know the fishes that we eat, they contain mercury. Okay. That's the organic one, methyl mercury. Okay. That is not that very harmful. Do we, we, do we, how? It's how natural. It? It's natural. Yes. Wonderful. Oh. Marine fish contain methyl mercury. It's natural. Okay. But it's the inorganic one, which is causing the harm. And that okay. is what uh, he wants to dwell on. Exactly. So. So that so, is artificial. Well, it's, the it's, one that we are using in it, the Galamse activities would be considered the no, So, you see, even the ones that we use in Galamse activities, Doc explained the process. So, the process is that they wash the, 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 the sand or the soil, uh, what they call the sluicing, and then once they're able to uh, finish with that, then they bring it all together and add mercury to amalgamate it, to basically bind it. Now, once that is done, they heat it for the mercury to evaporate and then they get the gold. So this is like a summary of that process. Now, in doing so, you see, there are pores in our human skin. So it's part of the mercury could do, could enter. They inhale the gas as they heat. Okay. Some of the mercury also enters the water bodies. But even aside mercury, there's also the polluted, you know, the water bodies that are destroyed as a result of that. So Unido has been concerned for years and um, even somewhere in 1990, I think 94 or so, it was a project that we initiated to look at, uh, to support, you know, to essentially minimize the use of mercury. But currently, um, uh, we have supported, you know, Ghana has signed the, what we call the, the Minamata Convention. Yeah. And so um, um, our colleagues, uh, our partner agency, UNDP, uh, supported the uh, government to prepare what we call the Minamata Initial Assessment. And then you need to, uh, supported the government in partnership with the, um, the Ghana Health Service, um, and WHO and other partners to put together what we call a national action plan to address you know, the mercury in Ghana. Okay. Um, now, with respect to the, the small scale, you know, when we say Galamse and small scale, um, you know, the government uh, has a clear distinction between small scale mining and Galamse. And uh, so, uh, we, uh, our focus maybe will be on uh, the, the small-scale mining because Galamse is considered illegal. Yeah. Now, with respect to small-scale mining, so the use of, uh, of you know, mercury in small-scale mining, we, we supported the government to develop the National Action Plan to be able to address that. And then we have, uh, together with UNDP, put together a, a new project uh, which will be launched in a few, in a few uh, months. 
that project will um, essentially formalize the sector and also introduce mercury-free technology in, um, in, in small-scale mining. So you need those focus will be to introduce mercury-free technology. So in terms of our interest in the industrialization bit of the, the small-scale mining, our focus is to support with mercury-free technology. We'll be back after this short break where we take our closing remarks. Welcome back to Trash Talk. Today has been very, very exciting. We are talking about the activities in the environment which affect public health. And um, we've had UNIDO, we've had CSIR, and we've had Green Advocacy Ghana giving us their take on this. It looks like we are going to have to have a second round, gentlemen. You are going to have to come back. But before we conclude our discussions today, I want to take your closing remarks. I want to move to Green Advocacy Ghana, Mr. Amoya Osei, first. Just to contribute to the, uh, the e-waste uh, uh, discussion, um, we, uh, the project I mentioned earlier, the toxic site identification project that we you know, undertook around 2011, 12, 13. Yes, we, we studied a number of uh, um, Galamse sites um, and, and other small scale mining sites. And the data also formed part of the, the report that Joseph referred to. <clears throat> and we came across the main pollutants, arsenic, of course, mercury, arsenic, um, cadmium, and, and things like that. And um, these were even in the working areas of these uh, small-scale and galamsey operators. And the, the danger is that um, they tend to work anywhere. One thing is, see, anywhere in Ghana, we're doing a little exercise. We're training on the use of XRF. We have an equipment that we use to determine you know, heavy metal presence and pollution. And then, strangely, uh, we found that there was gold indicated in our readings. And so Where in particular did you have No, 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 I, I won't disclose, disclose that. Okay. Because immediately I was informed I had to stop it okay. and then got the people away Wow! because <laughs> once you know that um, this is what you know, your XRF is pointing to, it means there is gold. So that's the problem. A lot of the areas in this country has gold, but it doesn't mean that you must go for it. And that, that's our problem. That's our problem. I mean, what we, I, what we found out was frightening. And so when the campaign started earlier and we're going around some of the places, we're disclosing to them what we picked from our investigation. Frightening, but people not aware and exposing themselves and their children and, and that kind of thing. See, now for my closing remarks, um, I, I think we have, we have a challenge, but not as big as that. We need to go for what, uh, what is known as waste segregation. Okay. Separation of waste at source, so that the waste can be turned into a resource. Okay. And therefore, what will come out as the leftover real waste will be just a small quantity uh, which can be managed easily. Without that, we create landfill sites, engineered landfill sites, very expensive like the Pung One. And I tell you, if we do not practice waste segregation, they will be destroyed in no time. And we lose so much. We lose so much. So whatever it takes the assemblies, this is the way forward. We can't run away from it. We better start now. Because we, in the first place, we can't even collect all the waste we generate. If you take a craft, for instance, we can't. See, and then what we collect to, where do we take them? We don't have the places to take them. Okay, and 
uh, Joseph referred to the environmental impact assessment, uh, the environmental assessment regulations, uh, which we have to pay serious attention to so that the assemblies can rely on and that the EPA can monitor because, see, a lot of the urban informalities, uh, a lot of the slums and other things that develop are just because there are no planning schemes for those areas and developments tend to go ahead of planning mm, yeah. and then all kinds of problems then result in sanitation, waste management, drainage problems and, and then our health. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Um, doctor would also give us um, yeah. from so, the point of view of Water Research Institute. Yeah, so for my remarks, uh, I want to say that uh, uh, it's about time we put an end to our old habits because we cannot continue and expect a change in the environment. For instance, uh, indiscriminate burning of uh, refuse, uh, throwing of trash into the drains when it, it falls, the rain falls, all this must be put to an end because uh, they have uh, health implications uh, uh, eventually. And then, then I think uh, the ones, uh, once we put an end to that, uh, we will have, have a, a very peaceful environment to live in. So once again, environmental health is environmental wealth. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Now we'll end with Mr. Yeboa Unido. Yes. yes. So, Closing remarks. Yeah, so uh, first of all, let me thank you very much for the opportunity to come and uh, share some of the work that we're doing in Ghana. Uh, my, my last words will be that, um, you see, we cannot have enough capacity uh, to, uh, to essentially dispose of waste. So um, it, will be, uh, you know, it, is, it, will be, it will be in our own interest to begin to look at uh, various ways and options for either reusing materials so that we don't, and we don't immediately throw them away, or uh, recycling, where we, we you know we, we look at how we can actually convert it to other uh, you know products for you know other purposes, or we have to uh, begin to um, reduce the amount of waste that we generate, and then ultimately, if we can prevent generating waste from any activity that we are undertaking, let us you know think about these. And I think that once we're able to minimize the amount of waste that we dispose of or you know, put in the environment, then we're going to have a very safe, clean, and healthy environment to live in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, gentlemen, it's been exciting. I think we will have to exhaust this subject um, at another time. I want to say thank you for watching Trash Talk. Today we've talked about public health implications of our activities in the environment, and I hope you have picked something from it. What we are concluding by is health is wealth, but we must be responsible for all of these because everybody's activity impacts all of us at the community level. Stay tuned the next time for Trash Talk.